Good morning. Do you really think someone would lie like that? This is a, an interesting question because it's probably a pretty solid dividing line between uh, personalities or, or types of people. <clears throat> Do you really think someone would lie like that? I'm not saying lie like you told a lie. I'm saying lie like the big lie. The, the real heavy lie. The like, I have cancer lie. The I'm going to chemo lie. The shaving your head to make it seem like it lie. <laughs> like the big lie. Because for the most part, people seem to think that white lies are little things that are okay and uh, normal and expected in regular human interactions. And that is, that might be the case, but it doesn't need to be. There are a lot of people who don't think it's possible to not lie. And uh, I was one of them. <clears throat> now I'm one of those people who does not lie. And it's very, very different. If, if there's, this is a little bit of a tangent, but if there's one thing like, Coming to Jesus and changing my life, I can look back and say, you know, there were a lot of steps in that process, but I think the biggest step and the step that you could take, uh, the step that would probably make the most change, the, the most, or rather, I guess, an irreligious, a non-religious step you could take that would probably make the most change in your life, it would be to stop lying. Uh, because the first person you lie to is yourself. The person you lie to first and most is yourself. You're convincing yourself partially. Anyways, the big lie. So, the the big, the idea that, oh man, <clears throat> if someone tells that, that big lie, that big cancer lie, uh, or even something equally horrible, or even like a, a medium lie or something like that, uh, or has a minor lie that spirals out of control, as most minor lies do, and you wind up with this person, you know, creating entirely new people uh, imagining complete situations and then you know there's entire events that need to have happened and they're like well if you don't believe me just just request the police report and you're like oh man hey you know that's a do you really think anyone would lie about that and unfortunately that's the it's it's naivete <clears throat> because it is people do lie like that they lie the big lie. And if you are the person asking that question, guess what? <laughs> You're the mark. You're the person <clears throat> who fails to realize that, yes, people do lie like that. And some people lie like that uh, um, habitually. Uh, it's not even, there's not even a purpose to be gained in lying for some of this stuff. They're just like, it's a, it's a minor, it's almost like a, a secret power play. It's like, oh, where were you yesterday? Oh, I went to the store. Oh, okay, cool. Like, haha, -ha, he doesn't really know that I actually went to the pet store or, you know, I went to the restaurant or I went to the grocery store and then he actually went to the pet store, that kind of thing. And it, it means nothing to anyone except the person performing the lies. That person gets a little, a little twinge of I'm in control and this person's not. And I made him think what I wanted him to think, which means I'm, I'm enacting my reality. I'm creating my own reality. Uh, which is obviously not the case, but it sure seems like it at the time. Um, <clears throat> but if you are one of those people who would say, you know, if you get to that point, and you, you probably have if you've ever said, do you, think, do you think someone would lie like that or lie about that? And the answer is yes. And the person you're asking that question of, the person you have your doubts of, is probably lying ten times more than you might expect. And it's... Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a rude awakening to be that person who would be like, hey, wait, that's that's too far. We're not doing that. That's crazy, and uh, projecting that onto other people because projection is kind of the the number one cause of this issue is the uh, the belief, and it's a totally normal one, of course, uh, the belief that your experiences or your uh, your habits or your uh, your limits are those that you automatically kind of impose on other people uh, because you have probably no expectation. You probably have very little experience with people who are so entirely unlike you uh, as to be almost unrecognizable. So think about, uh, you know, evil villains in, in movies and those types of exaggerated characters and think about them as real people. Think about them. Imagine that those people were, were written uh, after 
real people or real characteristics of real people. And you're probably pretty close to right. Because you can look at things and say, well, you know, no one was that evil. It's like, well, <laughs> read, some, read a little bit of history. <laughs> you'll, find, uh, you'll find plenty of people. And in our, uh, in our uh, modernized, civilized society, obviously we have no need for, for lying and for stretching the truth. Uh, why would we need to do something horrible like that or something to, to hide horrors or deep, uh, deep falsehoods? And the answer is, well, you're just not aware of what those are. <laughs> you know, there's always a possibility that you just don't know. Uh, you know, someone who wants to know as many things as possible, someone who wants to collect lots of information uh, with the expectation, and I'm speaking mostly of myself before all this, um, collect all this information with the understanding, or at least the, 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 the tacit understanding or the impl implication that you will, with this new information, be able to better determine the outcomes of things. And um, I mean, you can identify patterns and stuff, but the idea that you absorb all this information with the purpose of making better judgments about the world is a good idea. It probably should be done to an extent, uh, but you must always, in the back of your mind, <clears throat> factor in the percentage of the possibility that you are not only completely wrong, but not even close. You know, there's a, there's always the potential that you you look at someone's actions and you infer their intentions from their actions, and you say, well, it's clearly one of these three things. You know, it's, it's this, this, or this. That's it. It's one of these three things. That's it. Uh, there might be something that I missed, uh, but it's probably one of these three things. And, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the time, 70 to 90 percent of the time, you're probably right. But uh, in those smaller percentages, not only is it not one of those three things, it's not one of the 10 things that you would come up with. And it's possibly something that you would never even consider. So being too certain of yourself is, is always something that you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to fall, it's a trap you don't want to fall into. I mean, you can only operate on the information that you have, but you have to remember that there's a possibility, a remote possibility that you are entirely, completely wrong. Because the fact of the matter is, uh, reality does not care whether or not whether or not you believe what is happening is possible. Uh, if there's some, you know, physical exchange that takes place uh, at a quantum level that causes something to happen, and you say, "Well, I don't understand that yet," uh, because you know, human study of physics is not quite there to understand that thing that happened. So, for all intents and purposes, and for all of my understanding, that thing is impossible. Period. So it didn't happen, so I must have imagined it. Well, if in 10 years this discovery is made and people say, oh yes, it, it appears that this type of phenomenon might be experienced, then you can think back 10 years and go, oh, well I was wrong then. That thing did actually happen. So there's always a, there's always a potential there for things to just be entirely wrong. <laughs> and it, it, part of that is, you know, I, I talked about this in the uh, how God talks to smart people video. Uh, it's part of it is just being able to let go, being able to, uh, release control, relinquish control. You know, if you want to release it to God, or if you want to release it to the universe or some other, uh, metaphorical representation of God, uh, <laughs> by all means, you know, do that. Just don't be so certain of yourself that you take actions in order to, uh, you take actions based on, or you take extreme actions based on what your understanding is of things or what your perception of things is, because there's always the opportunity that you're just plain wrong, and it's something that you never even considered. So, back to the question: Do you think someone would lie like that? And uh, just the just the incredulity in that that question is something that you need to understand, because if you find yourself incredulous about something. If you find yourself in utter, complete disbelief about something, you need to understand that it's possible that you're wrong. It might not be likely, or, you know, there are varying degrees. Uh, if you're just not a very good people person, or if you haven't had a ton of experience with people, especially if you change... <coughs> <coughs> it's a little too dry. <coughs> especially if you, you change your environment or change your context. You know, if I, uh, I have a lot of experience with uh, working in technical fields and working with engineers, and even, work, bleh, even working with some salespeople, but if I suddenly um, 
leave that and go to a convention for uh, New Age uh, astrologists and we go to dinner afterwards and everyone's having lots of conversations and talking about their exploits and things that they've done, I am completely out of my element. So for the most part, that social interaction, that experience of that social interaction starts at zero. Uh, so <laughs> everything that I hear and everything that I understand is going to be taken as a with a grain of salt. It's going to be treated very differently from how I would treat statements from engineers at my place of business with whom I've had years of experience with. So it's, there's varying degrees of it and you need to understand some of this, but the chances are, uh, if you're listening to your gut, it's probably, it's probably right. Or at least there's uh, there's some, uh, some kernel of truth in the doubt or that's the other thing. There's, there's frequently a kernel of truth in the lie in order to uh, to justify the lie. And that's that's another thing about lying is you, people try to make the... Uh, there's, there's lying as in like, I went, to the, I went to the grocery store yesterday, but I didn't actually go to the grocery store. Or if he says, uh, the person asked, hey, did you go to the store yesterday? Or did you go to the grocery store yesterday? And you say, ah, oh, well, I went to the store yesterday, but it's secretly the pet store. And you've you've lied by uh, you've lied by implication. You're you're implying that you went to the grocery store, but you didn't really say it. Now, did you? You're you're playing with words. You're still doing the same thing. The other thing is there's there's a mishearing and misremembering and little caveats and excuses that we use to uh, to stretch the truth in a way that we consider to be comfortable, or at least more comfortable and. The reason you do that instead of a straight, bald-faced, verifiable lie directly to the person's face is you know that lying is wrong and bad. And should the person discover that you were lying, they would think of you as wrong and bad. And it's a, uh, that's the, the deviation is, is your, your self-view, your view of yourself and your understanding of the kind of person that you are because you are the only person who knows all the things that you've done all the horrible terrible things and all the lovely wonderful things and deep in your heart whether or not you actually believe those things or you know it's the there is there any truly good act well not really not from uh, from external observation but to know the heart which only god and only the person who is that person who runs that who operates that heart uh you're never going to know because uh, you can take the most altruistic situation and then twist it by changing the context slightly. Oh, well, he, he fed a bunch of orphans. Well, actually, he was on community service for exposing himself to a bunch of orphans. <laughs> that seems like a bad matchup for your community service, but <laughs> it's beside the point. The idea is that, you know, you're the only one who knows. You are the the only judge on this earth to be able to say, is what I'm doing right? And is what I'm doing good, or is what I'm doing wrong? Is what I'm doing evil? Um, it, are my misdeeds, if brought to truth, or are my true actions, true intentions, if brought to light, are those things that people will celebrate me for or vilify me for? This is the, the deep question, the question we have to ask ourselves, because if that question is no, then we have to confront the reality of our actions. And we have to reconcile them, which is why I say that the most uh, the most effective thing you can do to change your life is to stop lying. Uh, it's because you stop lying to yourself. You stop lying about uh, X, Y, and Z. You know you have hopes and desires and dreams for yourself as well. And if you fail to fulfill those, you can make excuses to yourself and you can make excuses to other people, but you are not going to believe them. You are always going to understand. You are always going to know the truth. And that's why you can't. That's why you can't get ahead. That's why you can't figure this stuff out. That's why you can't. Uh, that's why you can't escape the the feelings that you have. It's because you're not being true to yourself, which is sounds like an after school special or something. I don't know.